Welcome back. The folks continue removing debris and working on repairs after the storms this past month and all that severe weather. Whether your home was damaged or destroyed or not, financial challenges are just the beginning for a lot of Houstonians. And then if the weather didn't get you before, it might get you coming up because hurricane season starting. We got Michael Neuenschwander from Outlook Wealth Advisors back with us. Michael, good morning. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm good. Great to be here. Great to have you here, I should say. Uh, for the folks that have been dealing with storm damage, uh, Obviously, the financial part of it is mm -hmm. huge. First, top of mind, you got to make sure everybody's okay, yeah. start clearing debris. But now we have to start dealing with the money, putting our lives yeah. back together. Let's talk about some of the steps that we take after a storm. The first thing you say is we have to file that insurance claim. Yeah, so, I mean, whether you got a little damage or, or a lot, I mean, getting things in order, getting the ball rolling with insurance is important because what a lot of people have discovered is you know, it may take an insurance person uh, several days to a week to get out. Out there yeah. so getting the ball rolling is number one but going right along with it document everything you know, take out your cell phone you know, start taking as many pictures of that damage whether it's the house your car personal items because you got to you know you have to substantiate you know what you right. lost the other key thing that goes with that though is make a copy for yourself so when you turn everything over to the insurance company even if they don't cover everything or you got to meet that deductible first anything they don't cover you can actually try to deduct from your taxes so you want to make sure you've got a copy of all that as well. No kidding. We're talking digital form, photos, videos, whatever you can get. Yep. And receipts, do we need that stuff too? Yep. So receipts are a big one. So if you've been displaced, you can't be at home. Um, keep receipts for housing, where lodging, you know, extra food, materials, because again, most insurance companies have a clause that says loss of use. So if you can't be in your home, they will actually pay for you to be in a hotel, short-term housing, etc. They'll even cover stuff out of your refrigerator if you were out of power for three or four days and lost all your food, make sure you throw that receipt or some documentation in there as well. And another good reason, I guess, to know your policy, at least be familiar with it or have an agent or a broker or somebody that can help you out? Yeah, so it's as many cases talking directly to the insurance company. They may be speaking a foreign language sometimes. So if you, <laughs> if you do go through an agent, they're actually usually sort of your best liaison in the beginning to make sure you, you're, you're taking full advantage of everything that's in your policy. All right, next thing you say is register for a Assistance. What are we doing there? Yeah, well, because of these storms, you know, our area was declared both a state and federal natural disaster area. So you can go online, register with the state, but also with FEMA, so that you make sure that any federal assistance you may be entitled to, you're in the system and able to be to be eligible to collect. And you want to get right on that. You don't want to wait. Yeah, as we all know from years past, I mean, we don't want to have blue tarps hanging out for months or a year after the fact. So yeah. the sooner you can get things done, you know, the better. All right. Next thing you say. Stop unnecessary expenses. I feel like it's kind of hard to know what's necessary and what's not when we're going through this kind of trouble in our yeah, lives. Yeah, well, and the big key there is if you know you're going to have some upcoming extra expenses of getting your life back in order, there are certain things you can probably dial back. If you're staying with friends or family, well, do you let your Netflix or streaming go for a little bit because you're going to be on theirs? But some other big ones, if, if you're not in your home, well, can you pause your internet service or phone or TV? If you still have it, you know, bundled together, reach out to those companies, let them know you're not in the home because of a disaster, and they're typically willing to work with you and pause or forgive you know that month of, of coverage. Okay, so we're trying to save some money there because we're, chances are if we've experienced some kind of damage, we're going to have to bring a lot out of our pocket. Correct. Prioritizing bills, what are we looking for there? Yeah, so here's the other key thing. There's certain things you have to pay for. I mean, you don't want to get behind on your mortgage. You know, if you got a car, you still need a car, so make your car payment. But the other key thing is your, your insurance premium themselves. If you're trying to file a claim on insurance, you better make sure your policy's paid up right. and don't let that lapse and let the insurance company off the hook. Yeah. Uh, I actually had a personal experience of somebody I know had flood insurance, however it lapsed about a week before the storms hit. Oh. They thought it was paid, but for whatever reason didn't happen. So make sure you're up to date on insurance. And then is it worth even calling and, and saying, you know, to maybe to the mortgage company or to the bank that has your car loan, hey, we just had a natural disaster. I just got a tree on my roof. Can I can I take yeah. a month? Is there anything we can do? Is it worth calling and asking? It is. Being proactive is your best bet there. So oftentimes they will work with you if you're giving them a heads up. A particular one that's critical for many people here, 
utility bills. In general, with us entering the hot months, the utility providers aren't supposed to cut service because of the health risks that would go with that, but making sure that you're at least giving them a heads up. If you're gonna be short, you're gonna be behind, let them know and they're generally willing to work with you. So in some cases, the company's under an obligation, but in some cases, they're not under Correct. an obligation to work with you. You just have to be nice and hope you get an understanding person on the other end. Yeah, and many times, I mean, they'll at least stretch it out, let you delay it, waive penalties or extra fees, things like that. Okay, and the last thing, and you know, I don't know how you rank these, but this is a big one. Beware of the scams, and there are so many of them, yeah. Michael. Yeah, so unfortunately, you know, when we have a storm or disaster come through, it typically means, well, you're gonna have to get a contractor, a roofer, some assistance. There's a whole class of contractors in the industry. This term is called storm chasers. That They move around the country just from one disaster to the next. Not to say that they do bad work, but the issue becomes if they're not here in two months and they need you need something fixed, they didn't complete something, the odds of you being able to track them down, drag them back here, or get that work completed become very slim to none, right. just to say the least. The other, on the plus side though, when we talk about contractors, one thing we are seeing, um, a lot of the more reputable, the bigger firms around town are able to offer sort of 0% financing again. So when we talk about the big picture of budgeting and things yeah. to look out for, uh, if, if a roofer will do it for six months, no interest, make sure you're taking advantage you know, of that sure. as well. But, sure. and, and I guess you have to be careful the, the paperwork to a certain degree. And going yeah. back to your point about the storm chasers, I mean, uh, we've heard even from our own Amy Davis, sometimes they're giving you paperwork and you're essentially signing over your claim. You're mm -hmm. signing over a lot of things that you may not even know about. Yes. So the best way to really make sure you avoid those scams, quite honestly, it's, it's word of mouth. You know, talk to friends, family, neighbors. Can they give you a recommendation or referral from somebody they've actually used? Mm -hmm. Obviously, online reviews help there as well. But the other big thing that kind of goes hand in hand, if you're in city limits, they're supposed to be responsible for permitting, licensing, making sure they're insured. So oftentimes, those out-of-state you know, companies that just come in temporarily don't have that lined up, or they're certainly not playing by the rules. And if, if you do stuff without a permit, obviously that'll come back to bite you, certainly sure. when you try to sell or do anything else down the road. Yeah, indeed. There's a lot to think about, and for folks that may want your assistance, how do we get in touch with you, Michael? So, oh, you can always catch us at outlookwealth.com for Outlook Wealth Advisors, our website. Obviously, uh, social media, everything else is, is available, but last big thing we kind of share with people as we wrap up and say, making sure, how do you make sure this doesn't happen to you? If you're lucky this time, but right. what if we have the hurricane? This plan, as we've been saying. So these yeah. tips we're touching on, while they may be important for people who are experiencing it now, keep that in mind. If this hits you down the road, these are things you should hopefully be a little proactive and do ahead of time as well. Yeah, we're, we're all susceptible to the to the weather, especially in this part of uh, yeah. the country. So uh, very important. Michael Neuenschwander from uh, Outlook Wealth, really appreciate uh, your time and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Uh,